For the color themes feature in my app, I wanted a way for people to select any color they want along with some curated themes. And in iOS 18, there are those sliders when you configure tinted home screens, which I thought would work in my use case as well, because they are in line without any additional models or menus to select the color, which was exactly what I wanted. On the surface, it seemed like a relatively simple component, but turns out there are a few not so obvious design and implementation challenges challenges, so I wanted to walk you through the build process step by step from scratch and also along the way share some of my design and coding tips that I use day to day. Now, on a very high level, there are three main challenges with this component. First is just the basic slider mechanics, moving the knob left and right and limiting it to the correct boundaries. Second is to properly calculate the value selected on the slider based on the knob position and to make sure that other components can react to the value changes in real time while I'm still dragging and not just when I release the knob. And third, surprisingly non-trivial, is to calculate the color of the knob based on the underlying value of the slider. Usually when I work on a very isolated component without side effects like a button, toggle, text field or a slider in this case, it helps to first define what are the inputs and outputs of this component to understand how it's going to work in its surrounding, what kind of properties the parent component should have in order to use this new thing I'm building. In my design, one slider selects the the colors hue and another one selects lightness. This means parent component should tell the slider what kind of gradient to display. It cannot be hard coded inside. The most flexible way to do this would be for the slider to receive an array of colors as an input and it will just render them as a gradient. It won't care about the actual meaning of the colors. This would be a responsibility of the parent component. For the output, I don't want it to give me back another color because again, according to the designs, it's not meant to select a color, but rather a single parameter of a color. Hue in one case and lightness in another. A single value ranging from 0 to 1 would be more than enough in this case, because having this 0 to 1 value, I can easily convert it to any other range. And also because it selects a color parameter specifically, 0 to 1 is especially convenient in SwiftUI context, because there all color inputs are normalized to be in 0 to to one range. I'll start by creating a new project in Xcode, renaming the default content view to be my color slider and defining the basic structure of the component. A capsule with for now hard-coded linear gradients and an overlay with just a white circle as a knob. At this stage is good enough representation, I'll polish the visuals later. Now let's add the dragging part. I'm going to need a state variable to hold the current horizontal drag volume, then of course the drag gesture on the knob view with a mean minimum distance set to zero because I want the slider to react immediately when I try to move the knob with the finger. And the updating function for now just writes the current horizontal translation into the state parameter which eventually SwiftUI will save into the drag translation state variable. And the last thing is to use the drag translation which I got from the gesture in the offset modifier on the view. I'm using offset here instead of position because offset is always relative to the view own center, no matter where it's positioned inside the parent view, which matches perfectly with drag translation that comes from the gesture. It's also relative to the point where the drag starts. Now let's see how this looks. The dragging part itself works fine, but there are still some issues. When I stop dragging, the knob snaps back to center, and also I can drag it outside of the slider, which is of course not how it should work. The snapping back to center happens because I'm using gesture state instead instead of the normal state property wrapper, and the whole purpose of gesture state is to reset the state variable to its initial value after the gesture ends. And I want my drag translation state variable to exactly match the state of the gesture, so resetting it to zero after the gesture ends is the correct behavior because at that point no more dragging is happening. But this also means right now there is no way for me to save the latest position 
position of the node, so I need to add another state variable. This time it's just a normal state, which for now starts at zero, and after the drag ends, I want to modify this value by whatever was the last drag translation. Then the offset will be a sum of the current offset and the drag translation. If there is no drag happening at the moment, drag translation will be zero, and the knob will just stay in its latest position. Okay, this already looks better, let's now address this going out of bounds issue. Having the initial knob position in the center, its offset value is zero, meaning offset to the left will be negative and to the right will be positive. So knowing the total width of the slider, let's say it's 200 points, I want to limit the left offset to be minus 100 points, and to the right it's plus 100 points. In the code I'll have a function that takes the offsets and the widths of the slider and returns the corrected clamped offset within the boundaries. For the left side I want to select the maximum number between the provided offsets and the negative half of the slider width. And on the right side it's other way around, I need a minimum number between the whatever max function returned and the positive half of the width. Now before I can use this function in the components I need to know the width of the slider and for this I need to wrap the whole thing with the geometry reader. With this setup I'm going to have the widths and I already know the current offset so I can just call the clamp offset function inside the offset modifier and also inside the onEnded handler where I save the final value after the gesture is done. Okay it's almost there and the last issue is that the knob stops when the center hits the boundaries and I wanted to stop when either side touches the ends of the slider. And the fix here is very simple, instead of giving clamp offset function the whole width, I want to trim it by the knob diameter, one radius for the left side and one for the right. By the way, in the next video in this kind of format, I'm going to break down the grid animation I made for my app. There are a few interesting challenges to go through as well, make sure to subscribe to not miss it. Now I think it's a good time to take care of the output value of the slider, which as I mentioned before will be just a single number in the range from 0 to 1. Now in the widths of the slider and the current position, usually just divide the current value by the maximum value and you get the normalized 0 to 1 number, right? But in this case value goes from negative to positive, so I need to do something extra. And a good strategy for this kind of coordinate space conversion is to see how value behaves at the extreme point points and usually some pattern emerges. So in this case, let's say the width of the slider is again 200 points. On the left edge, the value is minus 100. I divide it by 200, it's minus 0.5 and I need it to be zero. On the other side, plus 100 divided by 200, it's plus 0.5 and I need it to be one. In both cases, the resulting value is shifted by minus 0.5. So the final formula to convert from not position on the slider to the 0 to 1 value is the position divided by width plus 0.5. I know that I'm also going to need the reversed formula to convert from 0 to 1 value to the exact position on the slider and doing the same exercise with values on the edges the final formula is the value minus 0.5 multiplied by the slider width. I'll add these two formulas as functions and now create a new property called value, which will be a binding and it will serve both as an input and as an output. This means parent component can now provide a value to the slider and we need to handle it by converting this value into the initial knob position. Good place to do this would be on a peer handler for the capsule, because at that point I'm already inside the geometry reader and I know the width of the slider. And because I want the value to be updated in real time while I'm still dragging the knob, updating handler of the drag gesture seems like a good place to update the value as well. And I'm also clamping the offset here because I don't want to set the value that is outside of the 0 
to one range. Now the slider accepts and properly converts the value, but the second parameter I wanted to have this list of colors that it renders as a gradient, it's still hard coded inside. So I need to make it another parameter that the slider takes from the parent component. This time it won't be a binding because slider won't make any changes to the array of colors, it just renders whatever it's been given. Now for the top slider I have in the designs, I need to generate a list of colors that would result in this hue spectrum and kind of a brute force way to do this would be to just manually list a bunch of colors using their RGB values. But luckily SwiftUI doesn't only support RGB for defining colors, it also has HSB which stands for hue saturation brightness, meaning hue there is a separate component that I can change independently from everything else. Using a built-in stride function I say that I want to go from 0 to 1 with a step of 0.2 meaning there will be 5 elements in the array and I just plug whatever value it generates into the hue parameter of a color and I fix saturation and brightness to any value I like they won't change throughout the gradient. Now a small design tip regarding different color systems is that in general when you are designing stuff you almost never should use RGB because RGB is good for color calculations like filters, shaders, this kind of stuff. But in design when it comes to color it's all about perception and finding color combinations that go well with each other and look natural. RGB is just not the right model to think about this stuff. In real life we don't describe colors as a combination of red, green and blue. We describe them as more or less bright or more or less saturated, right? And color models as HSB or HSL are designed specifically for that to describe colors in a more natural, human-like way. And to give you an example how using a different color system can instantly level up your designs, imagine you're designing an app with some nice background color and you want to have a search bar that is a bit darker or lighter in shade than the background. What you could do is to just use black or white color and then adjust the opacity to different levels so that background color mixes in a bit. Which is what I was doing for a long time when I was designing my first websites and apps. But this unfortunately produces a very washed out muddy colors that are not very pleasant to look at. A better way to do this is to switch into HSB color model and then follow a very simple rule. You start with an original color, the background color in this case, and then to get a lighter shade you increase the brightness and reduce saturation. And to get a darker shade you bring the brightness down and increase saturation. I hope it comes through in the video but the colors at the bottom look way more natural. And it looks natural because this is exactly how it works in real life with objects being in shadow or exposed in light. And there is no opacity value for black and white overlay that would give you the same result. And going back to RGB because there is no separate control for saturation and brightness, it's very hard to come up with a cohesive color palette. For designers out there I'm saying super obvious stuff I know but for me as a developer it was a huge breakthrough at some point. Anyway the slider is almost done, the last major thing is to show the currently selected color on the knob and the lazy way to do this would be to just make the center of the knob transparent and call it a day but that's not how we do things here okay. I want to calculate exactly which color corresponds to the current slider value. So the slider receives the list of colors and then because it uses linear gradient to show them, colors are equally distributed along the width of the slider and gradient just interpolates between them. And then I have the value which goes from 0 to 1, so I already know that value of 0 will correspond to the first color in the list and the value of 1 will match the last color. This means multiplying the value by the maximum index of the color array would give me an index of an element inside the array. Most often of course I won't land exactly on an index but somewhere in between like here let's say it will be 1.2 so if I just round this number down I get 1 which is the index of the color on the left and if I round it up 
up, I get two, which is the index of the color on the right. Now I have two colors, I need only one, so I'm going to mix them in the correct proportion. And by the way, in SwiftUI there is a color.mix function that would solve the mixing part, but it's iOS 18 plus, so I'm going to implement my own basic version. In this example, I landed on a value of 1.2 within the array, so if I just subtract the left color index from it, I get 0.2, which is the proportion with which to mix two colors, 20% of the right color and 80% of the left. So I'm going to add a function that takes the current value and the list of colors and gives back another color. And as I described, finding out the two colors on both sides of the value and the mixing proportion. Now I have those two colors, right? And in order to mix them, I need to extract some actual values from them. It could be RGB values, hue, saturation, brightness, whatever, just some real numbers. But because in Swift UI colors are dynamic, they depend on the current context, like dark or light appearance or some accessibility preference. I need to first give this context to the color in order to get some actual values from it. So first I'm going to take the whole environment using .self as an environment key, and then I'll give this environment to the colors resolve function, which returns back an RGB values for that color according to the provided context. Then using the proportion value, I take parts for red, green and blue components from each color and return the final result. Then instead of the hard-coded white fill for the knob, I call the function and get the current color. For the final thing, I added a few purely visual tweaks like borders and shadows that are not super important to go through, but I also published the full code on GitHub. There is a link in the description. Let me know in the comments if I missed something or maybe there are better ways to implement some of this stuff. I hope this was somewhat useful, but that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Cheers.